I offer my pranams at the lotus feet of Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba. Dear listeners, co-travelers on the path of spirituality, I am so happy to be with you and uh, sharing the various important lessons learned at the lotus feet of Bhagwan and uh, it will be my privilege, even if a single person gets little benefit out of it, it will be my good fortune. After Swamiji appointed me in the MBA department, uh, that time there were no uh, professors, there were lectures, but he said, I appoint you as a professor. Wow. Then after a few days, uh, Swamiji came and asked me, what's your name? I said, Swamiji Bhagya. What's the... What? Bhagya? Bhagya is a lady's name we hear in South. Bhagya Lakshmi. <laughs> Everybody was laughing. What's the meaning of Bhagya? Now, I, I was not prepared for such an interaction. Then uh, it recalled me uh, to the college days. I said, Swamiji, in my college, <laughs> my Colleagues, my co-students, they used to tease me, Bhagya, I mean Bhagya. He was very uh, serious. Sternly he said, look, Bhagyam, meaning of Bhagyam. Oh, Swami, Bhagyam means good luck. He said, good luck? I said, ha, Swami, good luck or? I said, Swami, no bad luck. Good luck. He said, yes, good luck. Why? He asked me. I said, Swamiji, I have, we are with you. So it is our good luck. He said, yes. I am always in you, around you, above you, below you. Always good luck, good luck, good luck. Wow. I said, I am so happy. Nobody gave me interpretation of Bhagya as a good luck. After a few weeks, again Swamiji comes and asks me, what's your name? I said, Swamiji, Bhagya. What's the meaning of Bhagya? Swami, good luck. Listen. Bhagyam. Bhagyam. Now, few days prior to this interaction, Swamiji had uh, uh, given discourse in that he was explaining Bharatiyas. Bharat. The bha means bhakti. So, Swami, I tried to uh, interpret. Swami, bha means bhakti. Gya, again thought was going... Chala gaya. He said, Gya means Gyan. Then I said, Wow. He said, Bhakti reinforces Gyan. Gyan will reinforce Bhakti. Now just imagine one my name, which I didn't know anything, he's telling me so much. Now, why he was uh, emphasizing on this? After I joined, one of the interviews, personal family interview, along with so many other VIPs, he was introducing me to the VIPs. And then he asked me, uh, Kya karta hai? What are you doing? I said, Swamiji, Swamiji has uh, appointed me uh, professor in uh, MBA department. And what did you do before coming? I said, Swamiji, I'm a first class, first chemical engineer from Bombay University. And... He didn't allow me to complete a sentence. He said, forget about your chemistry and chemical engineering. Sir, inquire who am I? I didn't know. What is this inquiry? Who am I? In my mind, I says, Swamiji, I accepted you as God. That's why, why I have come here. And you are asking me who you are. You are Avtar. But that was not the way. He wanted me to think. Look at his master plan. Came out from the interview room. One very senior old devotee, he met me. He was keen to find out what did Swami interact with me. Frankly, I was not interested in that because I wanted to um, enjoy or uh, um, do introspection but based on what Swami has said. But this gentleman kept on asking me and he gave me a book. 
he said, would you be interested uh, in a book, Teachings of Raman Maharshi by Paul Britton or something. <clears throat> so, I, out of respect for the elderly person, I took the book, opened the chapter. Third chapter was, who am I? I said, what? Who am I as a subject? It's not that Swami was asking me who he is. But I should find out who I am. So this is how Swami put me on the path of uh, self-inquiry. Now, keeping that in mind, I thought, Are, now just you have to find out who you are. There's no need of uh, bhakti running after Swami or bhaj attaining bhajans. And that may not be required. Swami put me on a path of self-inquiry. So when second time he asked me, what is your name? Bhagya. What is the meaning of Bhagya? I said, Swami, Bhakti and Gyan. There he said, Bhakti reinforces Gyan. Gyan reinforces Bhakti. Because you are on a Gyan mark, you can't forget about Bhakti. Okay? So, I understood that the, both the things have to be kept at the same pace. Then, again, after several months, he asked me, what's his name? I said, Swamiji, Bhagya. What's the meaning of Bhagya? Swami, Bhakti and Gyan. He said, Bhakti and Gyan, they are like two banks of the river. Now, river has to reach the goal, destination of merging in ocean. How will it do? Water is required, which will flow through Two banks, isn't it? I said, yes, Swami. So, bhakti, jnana, and water is karma. You can't stop karma. I said, oh. Again, he corrected me. That don't think. Then, I was still thinking. He said, look. In front of Swami, on the wall, there was a clock. He said, look. The second sign. It moves, it is like a karma. 60 good karma, 60 digits, it moves the minute's hand by one digit. So, when you do good karma, your bhakti increases. 60 such digits of bhakti, your jnana increases. Any one of them, if you stop, the clock stops. So, nothing can be stopped. I say, wow, what a wonderful way. <laughs> Uh, I'm, don't please don't misunderstand me that I'm trying to highlight Bhagya and all. Bhagya, name Bhagwan took for all of us to learn because many uh, people, including VIPs at that time, they would come and ask me, uh, why will Swami asking you again and again, what is your name Bhagya and all? Not only that, Swami started asking them, are you Bhagya? Are you Bhagya? They were laughing and they came to me. Why is Swami including us also to be Bhagya? Then I would naturally give them the whole background. So they are also enlightened or uh, given the guidelines. Similarly, one day <clears throat> uh, I was uh, given various subjects. One of the subjects was production management. In that uh, CI test was there, uh, mid-semester test. And uh, uh, there I had put the uh, the set the question paper for 50 marks and very first question for 25 marks I had put that uh, what are the five life breaths of an industry which Bhagwan Sri Satyasai Baba has given using those how a manager could be an effective production manager now Swami had told us he had said uh, explain to us. So I thought when Swami has explained on a subject, it is my duty to uh, highlight that and let the students understand this. So <clears throat> one Sunday, Swami came and asked me, uh, what examination? I said, Swami, tomorrow is a paper. In fact, I recollected that the, it is tomorrow the pro production management test. He said, what is production? What is the production? So he started taking my exam. As Swamiji, it is a, a projection of the mind. Uh, then only it comes. 
He said, what are the uh, most important things for any industry? Production, collection, connection, then uh, uh, direction. So he gave five live beds, protection. So now he was, he started explaining. I was giggling because I recollect uh, that that's the very first question I put and Swami is not only given the question but even the answer. Now mind you, there were many students sitting away from where Swami was interacting with me. They thought that the interaction is not important, tomorrow paper is there. So they were busy in uh, uh, reading the subject matter. Whereas those who were close to Bhagawan, they paid attention. This is where even in Bhagavad Gita, it was the conversation between Lord and Arjuna. And it was so much, uh, you know, uh, anxiousness, anxiety, that even few words can come out. People were praying to uh, Lord uh, of uh, Air, Pawan, that please bring few words. Here, Swami was giving them so much input, some of them, they were not very careful. Next day morning, the um, examination was to start at 9 o'clock. I distributed uh, the answer books and then uh, before even the bell was given, hardly a couple of minutes were remaining, I um, gave them the question paper and uh, told them also to enlighten their moods that, uh, see, Yesterday, Swami was talking about uh, the production, connection, collection. Very first question is that, and enjoy, man, write. So, over, paper uh, was com completed. In the afternoon, we came, and uh, Swami, after the interviews were over, he came to me. How was the paper? I said, Swami, good. How they, how are the, uh, performance. I said, Swami, they're good. They've done very well. How do you know? You corrected all the answer books. Mind you, how perfect he is in communication. I said, no, Swami. They are telling. He said, then you don't say that they have done well. They are telling that they have done well. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Then um, uh, he said, Bhagya, chor, chor. I said, Swamiji, I'm chor. He said, you leak the paper. I said, Sir, I was laughing with him. Swami, yesterday you gave them the question and you gave the answer also. And you are telling me that I have leaked the uh, question paper. He said, yes. Technically, you leaked the paper. You gave the question paper two minutes before the bell was given. Nay. I said, yes, Swami. <laughs> he said, where am I? Where am I? I'm everywhere, sir. So he uh, showed his omnipresence, omniscience. He said, not only that, the second question, you had given the option, this or second question, you had said that um, uh, Swamiji has given the definition of manager, M-A-N-A-G-E-R. Uh, Based on that definition, how would you correlate that if we follow those definitions, we become the perfect production manager as well? Says Swamiji. So this is how he used to, in a common conversation, he would uh, reveal what he is, what he stands for, what we should keep in mind. Before even coming here, Based on Swamiji's teachings, I used to enjoy Namasmaran. Because I thought Namasmaran is the only one, only thing in uh, this period we can uh, keep our connection with the Lord. Uh, earlier I have uh, shared this, but it doesn't matter. And briefly I'll tell you, 1984 I was uh, in London and uh, there was a very difficult situation. I had to walk. 20 minutes to go to my workplace in a hell storm without the, uh, having protective clothes. So uh, I didn't know what to do. I started uh, uh, chanting Bhagwan's name. 
side arm, side arm, instead of left, right, left, right, side arm, side. And believe me, Swamiji appeared physically over there. It's not my imagination, not vision, physical. And Swami has a proof of it is, after joining here, Swami has made me uh, narrate this in his presence so that the other boys also know the efficacy of Nam Now, 1987, he put me in path of self-inquiry. So, and he also said that we have to keep the balance. I was uh, frankly not enjoying the self-inquiry, who am I? It's uh, rather dry to start with. And he had kept uh, giving in discourses and uh, personally also, go within, find out who you are. I said, go within where? Should I just tear myself, my chest and like uh, Hanuman, I should see whether inside Sai Rama is there. It was very difficult task. I used to sit there, even after evening bhajans, outside the, in the portico, outside the interview room, and uh, continue my uh, the self inquiry. But frankly, I didn't get anything. One day, one senior devotee went to Swami in the interview room around 7 p.m. And Swamiji was discussing with him. Both of them, they came out. Now, my eyes were closed, finding, uh, continuing the self-inquiry. There was a dilemma in my mind that should I open my eyes and have one additional darshan? Ah, what task he has given me, I should continue. Then, I said, no, here is available temptation, physical form, one more additional darshan. So, I opened my eyes. He came closer to me and looked at me, gave me a tap on my head. And both of them, the senior devotee and Swamiji, they went for whatever task they had. And I continued for some time, then went home. Next morning, also I used to do that every morning. Um, Swamiji used to give darshan around 6.30. By 7, it will be over. And I used to continue sitting there uh, carrying out his, uh, the instruction of finding who am I. And uh, sitting in the bhajan hall now, in the mornings, till or quarter to nine or so before the institute begins. So next day when I went and sat there, believe me, what happened, I don't know. As soon as I put my tried to put my mind inside, it just got sucked in, zoop. Just nothingness. Then my eyes were still closed. What I found that it is, I'm becoming bigger and bigger, not as this body, but like a um, balloon or a sphere. One sphere, the transparent sphere, without any boundaries, goes on increasing. Then it became so big that everything was included in me. There, I got the taste of it, what I am. I said, oh, this is what I am. Then I came out. When I was coming out from Mandir, roads, the buildings, the trees, the people, the vehicles, everything is encompassed in me. Nothing is different from me. Nothing is away from me. And not out of ego that oh, I am great. No. Everything is my part. It's belonging to me. Everything. So the selfless, pure love would emanate. I don't know till today what I've taught uh, the students on that day. <clears throat> Afternoon, when we came back and sat for darshan, then still... Enjoy. The bliss was continuing. That everything is me. Everything. Including this body is a tiny dot in me. Then Swamiji came for darshan. He looked at me as if 
a prick to the balloon. Pssst. Then I came back to my abnormal situation <laughs> of uh, what I was a lead before this experience. So uh, now he gave me the taste so that mind will yearn only to get such experience again and again. But it takes a lot of sadhana. In 1989 itself, after this experience, Swamiji uh, apparently he used to show displeasure with uh, teachers and uh, students and he would blame teachers first because we are not progressing on a spiritual path according to what he has uh, set for us. So he showed that he is upset with us. He, the worst punishment Lord used to give is uh, stop talking to the people. So he stopped talking to the teachers and research scholars, administrators. Everybody was upset. Everybody was praying, trying, praying and trying. Swami, please, Swami won't pay. Finally, with a lot of uh, prayers in the minds of teachers, he relented. He came to the institute to tell us that because we finally say, Swami, please guide us what mistake, what wrong we have done. Uh, please correct us. Swami, he came to the institute and uh, he gave a discourse. He said, uh, I'm just coming to a point where, which was very, very relevant to me. He said, uh, the most important sadhana is Namasamara. You people are teaching subjects, good. But what about your personal sadhana? So, Hari Nam, Hari Nam is the only way to reach the goal in Kali age. Now, I was sitting, leaning on the back of the chair, thinking that uh, actually I was allowed to do video shooting. Swami signaled to me that, hey, keep it down. So I had kept it down. So I was just listening to, only focusing, only to Swami's uh, discourse. And... Uh, in my mind, thought was running, since 1987, you put me on the path of self-inquiry. I used to enjoy Nama Sumran, so much so that you appeared there in London. And you put me, you said, no, you inquire, who am I? And now, to all the teachers, including me in the meeting, you are telling the most efficient way to reach the goal is Nama Sumran. That means... I wasted two and a half years. I have to go back now to Nama Simran. Moment this thought came, he looked at me and with a raised voice, he said, even pointing finger at me, that bad habits, sit straight. I was puzzled. Of course, physically on the chair, I was leaning a little bit back. Rest was such, of that chair design was such. But immediately I sat straight and uh, was trying to find out what happened here, what have I done. But all other, the including senior professors, the administrators, and they were looking at me. Oh, this fellow is the culprit, and Swami puts a flit when even if one mosquito is seen. So he has made a mistake because of that. Swami stopped talking to all of us. How? Oh. Then after this, I'm just cutting this story short. Then Swamiji, after the discourse, he came, asked one boy to bring the mangoes in the basket. So he was making mango, each one to catch. When uh, I was quite close, he came close to me. I thought I'll get an opportunity to receive mango from Bhagwan. He did not. Because uh, the boy who was carrying, he gave to Swami to be passed on to me. Swami put it back in the basket. I said, oh, I do. Today, I will not get even prasadam also. <laughs> but after finishing, people around me, he came personally, selected the best big mango, and he gave it to me. I had to hold my both hands. Mm. And he put my head down, indicating, take namaskar. I said, wow. 
स्पेशल ट्रीटमेंट फिर बड़ी अगेन पजल्ड ऑन वन साइड स्वामी इज स्कोल्डिंग अनदर साइड ही इज गिविंग इन द बेस्ट प्रसादम मैंगो सिग्निफाइज फॉर मी एट दैट टाइम वॉज वेरी वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट फ्रूट वाई ड्यूरिंग दिस सेल्फ इंक्वायरी फ्रेंकली एज आई सेड आई वॉज नॉट फाइंडिंग एनी अचीवमेंट satisfactory anything which can say that yes i am progressing so i used to ask swami where am i swami what how much have i progressed after pleading in one of the dreams swami ji came and he showed that i was seated seated under mango tree doing some meditation and one small mango raw mango it fell in my lap and indicated to me there itself in my dream that this is the progress the mango is just born <laughs> so it has to become bigger then ripen then your sadhana will be over whereas here now again connecting the same mango he gave me such a big beautiful mango so that means your sadhana is getting matured then in the night i was uh, it was very difficult why did he scold me why did he say bad habit sit straight my back he knows is not very strong but then he give the answer that whatever i may tell uh, publicly in the sense for all the teachers namo subhan is the best sadhana i have put you on a path of self inquiry you be straight and mind you please don't misunderstand me on that path mind will go again sai ram sai because every breath sai ram sai ram sai so mind will go here and there for self inquiry it is beyond mind it is an obstacle it is a, out of habit mind is going to nam smaran again i understood very well thank you swami then i continued uh, this type of uh, sadhana there was one boy again nothing against any boys or no prejudice to any teacher or including when he is interacting with uh, one person it is meant for everyone one boy he joined mba he had little ego he was very good at subject and he used to interact in the class uh, quite a bit Swamiji is antaryami. He used to take undue advantage of his uh, intelligence in the subject, and also in the company, trying to spoil the other students. So one interview to me and uh, Dean and another se- senior professor, Swami said, "Chuck that boy out." They were not getting the. name of the boy or swami is referring to but i got it because the boy had interaction with me in the class or other encounter with me in the class then uh, i said swami ji we should not uh, throw him out if he goes out he is very good very intelligent boy if we throw him out then uh, where can he progress he said he swami said he is using the intelligence in a bad way wrong way I said, Swami Ji, please give me one chance. I will pull his ear and give him a slap and straighten him. And so Swami said, Okay, you talk to him. But by the time we came out after evening bhajans, Swami sent a message uh, through senior person that uh, Swami would talk to him directly. Next day, boy got the interview. Swami, uh, out of love. Pure love. Uh, he wanted to. Swami wanted him to understand, but the boy didn't uh, yield much. Now, subsequently, in one of the years, Swami Ji, I besides remember 1993 August, Swami Ji um, called all MBA students and staff in Bindavan because Swami Ji was there, and there was some repair work going on here. and prashanti nilam 
Swamiji gave a nice treat to all of us. Uh, and after that, boys prayed to Bhagwan, Swami, we want a uh, uh, photograph with you. Swami uh, yielded and he said, okay, teach us first. So we went and stood uh, around Swami. One professor had a very good camera and he gave it to this same intelligent boy that you are good. So you, we are standing, you click the, and this is the norm we had to press. Those days, the cameras were quite different. So we are stood, Swami the center, so many teachers around and boy was trying to click, but it won't click. And few seconds, then it is very odd. Professor came out and took the camera back from a student and he clicked and it clicked. Then Swami said, no, 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 that's not enough. You also come back, Professor. So again, Professor had to go back. Now boy knows that camera is working. Again, boy tried to click, it won't operate. So he was very in an awkward situation, was sweating because making Swami and all of us standing in the sun. So Swami internally, he was uh, praying to the Lord. Swami looked at him and told him, hmm, click. And the moment Swami gave a signal, the, he could click. It was a very good lesson to him that Swami is a doer and he has unnecessary ego that he is a doer. But I don't think he got it. I could gather because <laughs> I had interaction with that boy. After some time, Swamiji called that boy. Hmm, come here. I said, wow, he's getting so many interactions. Swami told him, can you raise your right hand? He raised, yes, Swami. Put it down. Raise your left hand. Put it down. Raise both hands. Put it down. I said, Swami is making, making him uh, drill. Again, boy got uh, busy with uh, arranging groups for, with Swami's photo, for Swami photo. Uh, then, middle of the, uh, the process of uh, getting Swami, uh, pictures with Swami, Swami again called him. Hey boy, come. He went there. Raise your right hand. He was not able to write. Okay, raise your left hand. He tried hard, no. Raise both hands. Mm. He's not able to raise. There, Swami gave him a nice one. You can't raise even your hands without my will. And you claim that you are the doer. I am the doer, I never show that. You can never operate without my will and you presume that you are the doer. It was such a profound, effective lesson for all of us. Throughout our life, we have to remember that he is the doer. We are merely puppets. We are merely instruments in his hands. Swami, in one of the summer court classes, he said that uh, we should not waste time. 24 hours, we should do sadhana. So I came back, resigned. The dean was very upset. But I said, no. And Swamiji came back. I'm just cutting the story short, coming to the point where how Swami gave me the uh, wonderful guidelines. Swami gave a discourse in the interview room. There, straight, he asked me, what sadhana? I did not say anything. Then uh, he said, uh, why have you resigned? I said, Swamiji, when I go to the class, I teach subject, my mind gets diverted from abiding in self. Then Swami said, if you segregate, this is spiritual, this is worldly, even in thousand births, 
I will not give you what you want. I got frightened and got hold of Swami's feet. Please, Swami, forgive me. What sin have, have I done? That after thousand births, the statement is, I will not give you. I calculated each birth, even if it is on an average 70 years of human birth and 70,000 years gone, still not even a promise. There, Swami said, see, I have created this place where students are ready to receive, teachers are ready to give. There cannot be a better place to do sadhana than this. Taking care of them is taking care of the instruments. I am going to use those instruments to cleanse the whole world. And by, uh, guiding them, removing the little bit here and there dust from their personalities is your sadhana. Share your experiences with them. Make them worthy of being used as instruments in my hand. Then I'll be very happy. Then I'll give you what you want. The most important lesson I learned is that the, everything is a spiritual. You don't have to leave your workplace, go to Himalayas, or then assign time only for uh, some sadhana. Rest of the time is not the uh, spiritual progress. Every moment you take an opportunity to progress spiritually. One interaction in Thrai session, a beautiful one, out of blue, of course out of Swami, <laughs> he came and asked me, Bhagya, do you watch TV? I said, Swamiji, no. He said, hey, tell me the truth. Look into my eyes and tell me. When I looked into his eyes, it transported me back when I was a seven-year-old boy. There, I had interaction with my grandfather. One night, I had, with my uncle, I had gone for a movie. He had taken me to the last show, movie, good movie. And then uh, when we came back, my grandfather scolded my uncle, father's brother, younger brother. And uh, to me, he didn't scold. He said, you are a spoiler and you are spoiling the young boy also. And uh, then he looked at me. Why did you go there? That time, it was uh, not called film or cinema. Or my grandfather, when I was seven years old, he told me, Kya? Tum natak dekhne gaya tha. You had gone to see Natak. Kya Natak? Everything is Natak. Whole world is Natak. But remember, what's the meaning of Natak? Na Atak. Don't get caught in the world. World is Natak. It's a drama. It's a movie. So, when Swami asked me, look into my eyes and tell me the right answer. It took me there. I said, huh, Swamiji? Yes. I, uh, whole world is TV. It's going on, Swami. He said, hey, why do you switch on? I thought I'm uh, really wise to say that, yes, world is TV and I'm watching. But he said, why do you switch on? In my mind, you can talk to Swami freely in your mind. Are bhai, Swamiji, switch is in mind, not in my hand. Switch is on the country. You, start, you have the on-off switch in your hand. So, without words, looking at him, Mom, you tell me how... Am I switching on? He said, when you show any interest in the world, that channel you're switching on. And then you get caught. So, better understanding than what my grandfather had given to me. You take everything as a drama, but don't get entangled. Then, uh, in the same uh, uh, session, Swami said, you have come from industry. You, how many types of workers you had? I said, Swamiji, two types, basically. Full-time worker and part-time worker. Part-time worker, what you used to give them? I said, Swami, maybe um, 
whatever wages de- depending upon the number of hours they are put in to a full time worker not only the salary full salary plus uh, uh, ta da dearness allowance and uh, even the pension they would get he said similarly i am a spiritual bank manager you all pray to me it's your part time devotion whatever you ask for based on that you get rewarded but be a full time devotee and full time devotion is easier than part time i was thinking how is it possible because boys were asking swami swami please give us uh, the interaction and swami said no 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 then uh, uh, he said about this part time and full time i said swami ji even part time they have to spend whole of his spare time to pray to you how can they full time pray to you and do nothing there he revealed he gave a gem spiritual divine gem he said what is full time devotion the maintaining equanimity under all circumstances all the time is a full time devotion such devotee is dear to me so isn't it very simple in my mind i said swami no how can we uh, maintain equanimity unless we have firm conviction that he is the doer we are merely puppets in the hands of uh, uh, swami mind you there's one small equation which based on the interaction between uh, one senior devotee about one student who used to do very good and never get any attention from bhagwan whereas another uh, uh, student who was a son of a vip and if he does little bit uh, swami would come and interact with him so when senior devotee asks bhagwan that why are you neglecting the swami gives liberty to senior devotees that why are you neglecting the uh, boy who is so good there swami gave a equation please pay attention it's a very useful equation throughout our life swami said supposing you do good according to my guidelines and i come and praise you then you don't get any benefit equation settle your score is zero if you do good i ignore you then you get plus 1 score because you didn't get any compensation any praises if you do good for some reason i come and scold you for different earlier mistakes and you keep quiet you understand that you get plus 2 similarly on the other side if you do anything wrong i come and scold you your wrong is nullified your score is zero if you do anything wrong and you pray swami please don't expose me keep quiet swami i ignore you you get minus 1 if you do anything wrong but you keep on pressurizing me from your parents through other people swami no you should come and praise me i may come and praise you for something else you think that i am being praised because even though i did, did wrong to prove that see how uh, near to lord i am then you get minus 2 so this equation is valid for every one of us all of us are student in swami's uh, college to the students teachers and we all the uh, spiritual uh, work i mean the travelers on the spiritual path there is a very important uh, uh, information which i have understood uh, when a student comes here 
he has uh, no entry load. He doesn't have to pay anything, excepting, I mean, no uh, accommodation fees, no tuition fees, no hostel fees, no power, electricity bill, nothing, nothing. No examination uh, fees. He has to pay only for his own food. That also students run themselves cooperatively. So there is no entry load. When a student leaves the institution, he has been given title of a Sai student, which Swami need not give. He is a student of Satasai Institute, but people think that he is a Sai student. Sai student is one who follows Swami's teachings all the time under all circumstances. Then he becomes a true Sai student. Otherwise, he becomes the student of Satasai Institute of Higher Learning or Satasai University. So, when student leaves from here, he has very heavy exit load. How? People will expect certain behavior from the student. Similarly, we, when we come to Bhagwan, not teachers, but all of us, any one of us, when we come to Swami's folds and we remain with Swami, people understand that he, he has approximated Swami or he believes in Swami, there's, nobody is going to question you, why are you going? There's no entry load. You don't have to pay anything to become, uh, to call yourself as Sai devotee. But being Sai devotee, if you deviate from the expected norms of a Sai devotee, then any person will say, hey, being with Swami, this is his behavior, shame. You didn't learn anything. So, we many times feel that we did not have physical proximity with Bhagwan. What is actually true proximity? I came to know from a, a spiritual master, Nisargadat Maharaj, that what is the true proximity with Bhagwan? I will quote, living near does not mean breathing the same air, which people used to think, ah, he is very close to Swami. He is uh, taking Swami's uh, room in charge or this or that. So, living near does not mean breathing the same air. It means trusting and obeying and making your entire life a sincere expression of firm faith and true love for your Guru. So, that is a true proximity which is available to us anytime and every time. I hope this has been useful for all of us. Thank you for giving this opportunity. Sairam. Thank you.